we, we really believe that our work should be grounded in, in, in um, the, the stories that we operate in are the same, we're using the same principles and values that we're trying to put out in the world in terms of people being capable of coming forward with their stories. All members of our community have the means to be seen and heard. And by doing so that we live in a healthier, more robust community. So Katie, you want to talk us through a little bit, some of our guidelines that articulate that? Yeah, thank you. Um, so let me go ahead and share. So yeah, these are just some of our guidelines slash agreements slash beliefs. And um, we like to open up our sessions and our workshops with, with this list. So some of these are, are ones that we have come up with over the years, like Chris said, um, learning from other, other facilitators and practitioners. And then we also invite people to add their own to it. And part of today is a little bit of an abbreviated version of, of what we do, because obviously it's a shorter amount of time. So um, we'll go through this. So no one has to do anything that they don't want to. Um, these are exercises and the things that people want to do and share. And um, we've already kind of witnessed that in terms of you open up a prompt and, and people can interpret that and share as much as they want or as little as they want. And, and so we're, that's, uh, that's the first one. There's no good or bad in this work, no mistakes. Um, one of our most important ones is relationship before task that Chris mentioned as well. So taking the time necessary to build trust and relationships. Again, uh, you know, we, we took more time. Our, our icebreaker was originally gonna be maybe four minutes and, and it went into 20 minutes long. So that's kind of an example of wanting to take that time and, and, and seeing what the pulse of the group is. Um, and then, you know, as well as just when you're, when you're sharing stories, that's such a vulnerable thing. So it's really important to um, keep that at the top of the list <laughs> of uh, the relationship being important and, and uh, valuable. So then we have be impeccable in our work as artists and facilitators. So modeling, listening, and curiosity, which we've all done a little bit of. Um, embracing silences is another important one where um, we often feel like we need to fill those quiet moments and those silences, but that's often where people are reflecting and having that opportunity to take in what, what we've heard. So embrace silences, be willing to be changed and challenged. Again, um, just as you're listening and taking in what people say, um, having the ability to respond to that in a genuine way and, uh, and learn from people and be willing to be changed. Um, trusting the wisdom of the group and what emerges. Um, you know, we might have a, an idea of what the workshop is gonna look like, what the stories are gonna be about and it might go in a totally different direction. So trusting um, what the energy is of the group and people that you're with. Um, our small circles represent a world of equity and complexity. We provide a forum that contains the history and complexity of ourselves, our visions and beliefs. So this is a really huge belief of Little Globes um, that we just live in a world of complexity. Our stories are complex, our feelings are complex, our experiences are complex. And rather than try to box people in or um, you know, take sides. It's really about embracing that complexity of, of our stories and our experiences and um, knowing that that might be uncomfortable also, but in embracing that. Uh, step in, step out. So, you know, as we're sharing stories and talking and discussing, if you're someone that talks a lot, um, maybe stepping back a little. And if you're someone who's quiet and tends to uh, be reserved, maybe, trying out talking and coming and coming forward. And first thought, best thought. So not pre-thinking too much what you're going to say and what you're, how you're going to respond, um, but just letting it come naturally. So yeah, those are some of our core beliefs. And you know, as storytellers, we, one of the things at Little Globe we do is we will oftentimes go through a story generating process. 
and, and a few of you have been through this, where we'll spend months gathering stories as a group, finding different ways of expressing those stories through different kinds of arts, both film, you know, filmmaking and spoken word, movement, visual arts, things like that. Um, and then those stories kind of get sometimes put into common spaces and we will oftentimes have to then take that and go through some degree of, of, of a violent process of taking sometimes 40 hours of material and reducing it down to a theater experience for an hour and a half or uh, a document, an hour long documentary film, things like that. And the interpretation and the decision making around editing those are all issues that we as a team have really had to grapple with a great deal. And, um, and even, you know, you can see that we could probably spend a few hours even exploring one another's stories and then the experience of both having your story told in front of the group, but also the story, the honorable position and the complicated position of, of telling somebody else's story. You know, it brings up to the surface, I think some of the ethics of storytelling we really wanted to share and explore with all of you. Um, Katie, do you want to talk a little bit about some of the some of the ethics of storytelling principles that this brings up? Yeah, I think you know um, we've learned a lot from a, a place called Story Center out of California, and they do a lot of um, storytelling in community, and they've come up with a set of principles and. A lot of them are around clarity and communication and transparency, which are really important um, to have at the beginning of a process. And um, and consent is really a, a huge one. And one thing I think we've learned a lot is um, is having that consent be something that you continuously check in about, you know, because the process, someone may give consent at the beginning to, to telling their story and you have no idea how that process is going to affect them, how they are going to be changed, how the people around them might be changed during that process. So um, it's important to, I think, have consent at the beginning, have a check-in about that consent and then, um, it, you know, and then try to have that at the end as well and, and give people the opportunity to always take their story back from the public um, and, and have that right. It is, you know, a story is a gift that people are giving and it's not something that um, should be treated as yours to take. So I think that's a, an important thing to keep in mind. Um, and yeah, again, being being transparent about what the stories may be used for in what in um, in what capacity, you know, in Little Globe, we might have a project where, uh, you know, we have certain parameters around the project, and that's what people think that container is for that story, and then later on, realize that story is relevant to some other project that we're doing or um, another outlet that we have and we we feel like it would be useful to showcase that story then so um, that communication and talking with people about about where their story is going in what ways um, and talking and being transparent about the fact that it may be edited or or whatnot and we've also been de developing more processes to allow people to um, have that ability to be a part of the story process and being helping to co-author their own stories. Um, so that can be filming themselves, uh, recording themselves and doing that footage rather than somebody else going in and, and, and recording and documenting. Um, so they're helping to tell their own story, but then that's always, there's always the question of the editing of the story and um, something that, you know, to be honest, we haven't fully cracked that nut in terms of, you know, a media making um, production, the stories have to be edited down in some capacity. So, you know, the ideal situation is someone is a part of that process all the way through the end, um, that doesn't always happen. So, so those are some of the things that we, keep in mind and that we also grapple with at the same time. Yeah, we, we really believe in kind of an iterative process. And again, I think that one of the beliefs that we have in-house is the same belief I think that we, we feel like is so important um, in the outside world as well, which is we are, our processes changed, our, 
Our philosophies are changed over the course of a project. It's an iterative collaborative learning. And it's, it, there's some rough and tumble. I mean, oftentimes mid process, we'll, we'll work with somebody who suddenly gets scared that you know they were so vulnerable in, in a session and they told a story that they really re regret having made public. And you know, we will oftentimes need to hold a space for somebody to really express some complicated feelings. And for us as a group to be able to say, it's, it's okay, 100% okay. You, know, you might have a really important story, but it's, you know, we, we don't in any way want you to feel like this has been a practice where your story is being used by somebody else, but something you wanna share with the world because you think it's important. And um, I think so much of this work means that you, know, you, you made, we have had to go through the, the trouble of, of explaining to our funders that all of this work takes a lot more time to do equi equitably than, um, than it would seem like on the surface it should. And you know, oftentimes I think that we say that you know, we have to put in 300% in order to get you know, the collection of stories that we need to have a pretty full bodied um, collection of stories.